I can't make sense out of it. Hi everyone, hope you are doing well. Your boy Al is here with Kaiju number 8 episode 9 review so let's jump into it. At first we see Hashina research Kaiju number 8 and reflect on what he knows about Kaiju number 9. Meanwhile, Kafka resolves not to let Hashina down. Just before Kafka goes to bed, several meteors crash into various bases. Okanaji informs Hashina, who then suits up and orders all available defense force troops to take battle stations, directing them to lure any kaiju or hanju to the training area and away from the base. During the battle, Kafka calls Hashina, noting that it's unusual for wyvern-type kaiju to travel in packs since they usually travel alone. Hashina then notices someone directing the wyverns to complete an unknown objective. Kaijus attacked a base of the defense force, yet no one detected anything before getting hit by the attack, like seriously? This is totally nonsense storytelling. Also no, the attack happening very late at night shouldn't be an excuse, because in their world kaijus can attack anytime and anywhere. Next we see Okanaji inform Hashina that the sentient kaiju before him has a high fortitude level, categorizing it as a daikaiju level threat. Hashina instructs Ikaruga to focus on fighting any yoju. Before Hashina can outline his plan, the Daikeiju attacks. While Hashina engages the Daikeiju, Kafka tells Reno and the others to target the wyvern's backs. They struggle with the wyvern's armor until Kikoru arrives with her battle axe, smashing one wyvern's armor and allowing her to damage its core. Okanaji and the others research kaiju-related stuff day and night, but somehow Kafka seems to know more about kaijus than them, just because he was a janitor. Does this make any sense to you guys? Because it just seems like terrible writing to me? Some people might say Kafka is half kaiju that's why he knows more, but the story has been literally telling us Kafka knows more because he was in the cleaning team. Moving on we see that in a flashback to the base's underground weapon storage room, Hashina and Mina present Kikoru with a battle axe designed to match her combat abilities. Mina explains that although weapons are usually made for captains, the surge in fortitude levels and kaiju numbers this year warranted a special exception. Kikoru, being the third highest ranking defense force officer on the base, receives the axe as Mina declares her the third strongest officer after herself and Hashina. Back in the present, Kikoru continues her rampage, decimating wyverns with her new weapon. When a wyvern catches her off guard, Reno steps in to protect her. Kikoru thanks Reno and allows him to help her defeat the wyverns. The others, inspired by their feats, are motivated to give their best effort. If we go by the last episode then it has been around a week since the Kaiju No. 9 incident, so I'm failing to understand how Kikoru started using a totally new weapon and mastered it to the point that she has her own signature moves in such a short amount of time. Then we see Hashina lure the Daikaiju to the training area, where the Daikaiju, eager to become stronger by consuming Hashina, relishes the fight. Hashina assures Okanaji not to worry, intending to go all out to defeat the Daikaiju there. Meanwhile, Kafka rescues a defense force member named Minas from a wyvern attack. Reno and Kikoru arrive to battle the wyvern, with Kikoru instructing Kafka to evacuate the wounded and Reno urging him to trust his fellow officers. Okanaji informs Kafka and the others that more high-ranking officers have joined the fight, each reporting their battlefield actions. Kafka and Minas plan to assist the wounded, while Hashina continues to impress the Daikaiju with his combat skills on the training grounds. It seems Kaijus get stronger if they devour other strong beings, so it will be interesting to see whether Kafka will do it at some point in the story. Also I'm pretty sure this new Kaiju will probably be named Kaiju number 10. At the end we see that the Daikaiju transforms into a larger variant and exudes a deadly toxin, shocking Hashina. Fortunately, Hashina has a mask to protect himself. The Daikaiju roars in its powerful form, and Okanaji informs Hashina that its fortitude level has reached 9.0. Hashina not being able to end the fight was kinda expected, because Kafka didn't get any spotlight yet, but it would've been nice if they could let Hashina shine a bit more in his first somewhat proper fight. Overall, this episode had many issues, but people will enjoy the vibe of it. Nonetheless, 
Thanks for watching everyone. If you like my video then check out some of my other videos. Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel or leave a comment if you want to say something, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram or check out my Facebook page, links are given in the description until then see ya.